Oye, oye, oye. Silence is commanded by this honorable commission. All those having business, draw near. Thank you, and you may be seated. One of the joys that I have as chairman of this commission is that on our staff and a part of our commissioners, we have an array of ministers and pastors, and we're never caught short when it's time to <clears throat> do our invocation and our inspiration, because we can always reach in-house. And sometimes that even includes the chairman have to step up to the plate, but I'm glad this morning one of my former students is going to do that for me, and I don't have to do it, but uh, I want you to uh, introduce to some and present to others our uh, Elder Johnson, who is a native of Savannah and the daughter of Betty Cole and the late Robert Cole. She graduated from Alfred Eli Beach High School and earned a Bachelor of Business degree and be in a Business Administration and a Master's of Business degree from Savannah State College now University and the University of Phoenix. And by the way, I just returned back from out there. She is a devoted wife and a mother of two children. She works with us in our human resource department, so I can see her her chief resource over the bucket and buying ahead. Uh, Mona is one of her starch workers, and so let me uh, present to us today to do our invocation and our inspiration, our own Elder Ramona Johnson. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, he is telling the truth. I got a call from Gail at 9:10 this morning that I was needed to do this. So um, here I am. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you for the opportunity once again to bring a word. Good morning to everyone on staff. Good morning to you all. Um, I have a very short word this morning, and I hope that it uh, touches your hearts as well as it did when I uh, prepared it. A month ago, I was asked to speak on waiting. And this morning, I'm going to share a small bit of that because we all have issues sometimes with waiting in certain circumstances. So we're going to talk a little bit this morning about staying on the wheel. While we're waiting, we're like clay in the potter's hands. Jeremiah 18, 5 and 6 says, This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, or can I not do with you, Ramona, as the potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of the potter, so are you in my hand, Israel, Ramona. God's sovereignty over man is one of the greatest doctrines of the Bible, and its truth can be no better illustrated than that by the example of the potter. As the clay yields to the potter, we must submit to his authority. Clay has to be refined so that it can be usable, and we have to be refined, and sometimes that means we have to wait. So we can be shaped into a useful vessel by the master potter. The clay has to go through a drying season and be tried in the fire, and sometimes so do we. Like so many powerful men and women of the Bible, while we wait, we must allow him to make us into a vessel that's fit for his service. For example, Job was a man whose life and resolve was tested above imagination, but he stayed on the wheel. Joseph was betrayed and tempted, but he stayed on the wheel. Ruth left everything and received greater than what she could imagine because she stayed on the wheel. Nehemiah was taunted by naysayers who said he could not rebuild the wall, but he stayed on the wheel. Esther knew she risked everything, even being killed, but she stayed on the wheel. Daniel faced being eaten by lions, but he also stayed on the wheel. So no matter what, stay on the wheel. God hears your prayers. He may not come when we want him to, but he always comes. His plans are not our plans, and his ways are not ours. 
He has a bigger plan for us, and I'm so thankful for that. He will reward our obedience and give us the desires of our heart. But what do we have to do? We have to stay on the wheel. Let us pray. May we stand. Dear Father, we thank you for everyone that's gathered here today. Teach us to offer you a heart of thanksgiving and praise in all our daily experiences of life. Teach us to be joyful always. Pray continually and give thanks in all our circumstances. Help us to accept them as your will for our lives. Lord, we thank you for giving us an attitude of gratitude. Jesus, make us like the Apostle Paul who learned contentment in every situation. We choose to continually offer you a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of our lips, give praise to your name. Teach us the power of a thankful heart and also teach us to be patient as we stay on the wheel. Now, Lord, fill this meeting with your presence. As our commissioners meet today to conduct matters of business, guide their hearts and their minds in the spirit of fairness, right thought, and speech. Impart your wisdom upon this meeting, dear Lord, so that every discussion may reach a successful conclusion. Thank you for being their source of guidance today. Thank you for your many blessings upon us, our city, our county, and our nation. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Commissioner Stone. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Ms. Johnson, we want to thank you. It was one of the things that I hope that everyone who heard you take out of this, if you aren't studying daily and prepared. You never know when you come, when you're going to call on, but for to get it just before 9 and be here at 9.30 to give it to us and, and give us such a powerful word and, and, and uh, inspire us to, no matter what the challenge, stay on, on the wheel, stay in the midst of the fight, stay on the wall. All right? Thank you so much for leading us and guiding us. Roll call. Chester A. Ellis, Chairman. Present. Helen L. Stone, District 1, Vice Chairman. Pre present. <coughs> Kenneth A. Adams, District 8, Chairman Pro Tem. Present. Jean Rivers, District 2. Present. Bobby present. Lockett, Bobby Lockett, District 3. Present. Patrick K. Farrell, District 4. Here. Tanya Milton, District 5. Aaron Whiteley, District 6. Here. Dean Kicklider, District 7. Here. And let me say um, to all of you, we. Um, Publicly, you welcome our newest commissioner, Commissioner Rivers, joining us for her first meeting today. And it's been a, a event-filled week for her because we've had to bring her up to speed in a matter of days rather than a matter of months. But let me say to all of you who are listening, she met the task. Amen? And so we thank her for and thank you for that. Um, Proclamations and special presentations. At this time, we are going to call uh, Chief Kearns up. No, that's not Chief Kearns. Who am I? Oh, Philip Costa. Okay, from EMS uh, to receive this proclamation. Okay. The County of Chatham, Georgia. Proclamation, whereas emergency medical service is a vital part of public service and the dedicated EMTs and paramedics of the Chatham County Emergency Services have been providing exemplary emergency medical care and ambulance transportation to the citizens of Chatham County, and whereas the Chatham Emergency Services are ready to provide life-saving care to those in need 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Access to quality emergency care uh, improves the survival and recovery rate of those who experience sudden illness and injuries. And whereas the emergency medical services system consists of emergency medical responders, technicians, paramedics, firefighters, emergency physicians, emergency nurses, 
educators, administrators, and others. Now, therefore, I, Chester A. Ellis, Chairman on behalf of the Chatham County Board of Commissioners, do hereby proclaim the week of May 21st through 27th, 2023, as the 49th Annual Emergency Medical Services EMS Week with the theme where emergency care begins in Chatham County and urge all citizens to recognize the value and the accomplishment of emergency medical services providers and observe this week with appropriate programs and ceremonies and activity. <clears throat> in witness whereof, I have hereto set my hand and caused the seal of Chatham County Georgia to be affixed this 26th day of May 2023. Thank you all for the work that you do. And I know sometimes you get the blunt end of the stick right, in performing your tasks and performing your duty, but we just want you to know how much we appreciate what you do, because if it had not for, been for you, many of our others would have been uh, not here with us. But we are so glad uh, that you do what you do and to think that you don't even think about you know, rewards, anything, but just out the love of your heart that those services, the mic is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and uh, members of the commission. Um, I'm joined today by Deputy Chief uh, uh, Lydia McCreary, uh, paramedic uh, Alyssa, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Alyssa uh, and EMT uh, Henry. Uh, with that, I'm, I'm really proud that they're here. Paramedic Scarron and, and EMT uh, Robinson are here partly because of you. Um, one of the things that this commission has been very generous with is with uh, some funding uh, for education. Uh, these folks, uh, we've been able to train, um, and not only have we been able to train them to become EMTs and paramedics, and now they're returning the service to uh, uh, Chatham County, they're doing incredibly well. Uh, both of them were recently recognized as uh, EMT and paramedic of the quarter, um, and I, I couldn't think of a better way to uh, uh, reward them and show them and, and present them to you uh, as, as uh, you appreciate us during EMS week. Um, as you know, you know, it's been very busy. The pandemic uh, continues um, in our world, even though the public uh, doesn't necessarily see it. Uh, last year, Emer Chat Emergency Services responded over to 70,000 calls. If you do the math, that's one call every seven minutes. Uh, whether it's a motor vehicle accident in Port Wentworth, jellyfish sting on, on Tybee Island, someone sleeping on a bench that the public wants us checked out downtown, helping off a wheelchair or a chair in, in Skidaway or a chest pain on the south side savannah, um, the calls continually come in, and these are the folks that answer those calls. Um, the illusion is, if you do that math, is that the call comes in every seven minutes, but that's not how it happens. Uh, you can go 20 you know, minutes without a call, and then all of a sudden you get eight calls all at once. Uh, <laughs> and we have to have resources in all that, those areas. Um, and whereas I'm here and, and uh, Chief uh, McCreary are, are working to support our staff, these are the folks that, that are there answering the call, being at the bedside at 3 a.m., being at the curb, you know, along the highway, administering care. So we sincerely appreciate uh, your recognition. Um, you're free to ask them any questions or if you would like to say anything, but we appreciate this proclamation. Comment. Thank you for your services. All right. Any of you want to say anything? Okay. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you for your services. All right. Let me back up um, just one bar. Something I meant to do. You. Okay, let me, let me back up a minute and, and uh, do something I was supposed to do be before I started the proclamations, and especially, but I didn't look at to my right where I wrote myself a note, all right? Let me recognize now uh, our constitutional officer, our sheriff is here, and our tax commissioner is here, and also uh, Judge Moss is here. Wait, stand up. There she go. She's back over there hiding behind the others, all right? Uh, we want to recognize those as our constitutional officers who are present with us today. With that having been said, let me now call the manager for the Employee Service Awards. Good morning, Mr. Chairman and Commissioners. Uh, uh, this is one of the uh, enjoy, things I enjoy most about uh, this job, and that's getting to recognize our county employees who've uh, 
provide a service to the citizens of this community. Uh, at this point, I'm going to ask Ms. Carolyn Smalls to come to the uh, microphone, and we're going to, we've got uh, six or seven employees that we're going to recognize this morning for their faithful services to Chatham County and, and show our appreciation and give them a little token of, uh, you know, a little gratitude for providing that service to the citizens of this community. So, Ms. Smalls. Good morning. Thank you, County Manager Kegler. Good morning, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Good morning, Commissioners. It's a pleasure to be here. Mr. Kegler, I really appreciate those remarks, and I echo those. It's always a highlight this time uh, to recognize our team members who are celebrating a milestone with Chatham County and to come to this meeting and be recognized publicly for your service and your dedication to Chatham County. So we want to do that for you today. I would like for the county manager to please come forward. He will present your award. Also, um, we have department heads, we have constitutional officers here, and as you receive your award, we invite them to come and stand with you and also get a picture taken. So we have a little bit smaller group today. I think it's because it's a holiday weekend and, and some <laughs> team members were not able to be with us today, but we will make sure they get their um, service awards as well. So we are going to start this morning with a 25-year award, and I would like to present Captain Warren Blanton, Jr. with the Detention Center. Please come forward. years of service, I'm pleased to present Ms. Christy Norman with Mosquito Control. And with 15 years of service, I'd like to present Ms. Valenti Green with Magistrate Court. All right. Celebrating five years with Chatham County, Ms. Catrice Cummings with Administrative Services. And also celebrating five years with Team Chatham, Mr. Daryl Trotter with Fleet Operations. And also with five years of service, Ms. Dakia Garvin with Chatham County Child Advocate Office. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Again, congratulations to all of you. We thank you for your service, and we look forward to many more years of continued service to Chatham County. Thank you. Thank you. We don't have any chairman's items or commissioner items. We don't have any table items, which takes us to items for individual actions. And first, let me call on Commissioner Kicklider, who shall uh, take us at Thank our you. next step. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, at this time, I would like to make a motion to amend the agenda under the area on page five, titled Nine Items for Individual Action, subsection one, to add item I, which reads, appoint Tracy Amick to the MPC. I second. 
All right, it's been properly motioned and second that we amend um, our procedure and, and, and also our um, agenda to include Ms. Amy. Are you ready for the question? Please cast your votes. Okay, thank you. Appoint Gabriel uh, Gardner to the Live Oak Public Library Board. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. There a second? Second. Probably motion is second. Are you ready for the question? Please cast your votes. Oh, wait a minute, we gotta clear it. All right, now cast your votes. Okay. Reappoint Jackie is it A we? Are we? Are we? All right, to the homeless authority. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. second. Probably motion is second. Is are we be reappointed? Are you ready for the question? Please cast your votes. <clears throat> okay. Reappoint Charles Robinson Sr. to the housing uh, to the homeless authority. Are right. is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Second. Probably motion is second. Are you ready for the question? Please cast your votes. Appoint Marion Sharp to the Chatham County Board of Health. Motion. Second. Move. second. Probably motion is second. Are you ready for the question? Please cast your votes. Appoint Chester Ellis to the Chatham County Board, Chatham County Building and Facilities Authority. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. All right. Ready for the question? Please cast your votes. Okay. Appoint Linda Kramer to the Chatham County Building and Facilities Authority. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Probably motion is second. Is there a question? Please cast your votes. Appoint Amy Davis to the Chatham County Building and Facilities Authority. Is there a motion? I so move. Second. Probably motion is second. Is there a question? Please cast your votes. Appoint Brian Grant, Brent Grant, I'm sorry, to the Chatham County Building and Facilities Authority. Is there a motion? So move, Mr. Second. second. Probably motion is second. Is there a question? Please cast your vote. A request approval of the following. Wait. All right. I, Adam, I, we have to. Oh, I. That's right. We have to redo really that. Which I'm reads sorry. appoint Tracy Amick to the MPC. All right. Is there a motion? Second. So second. move so for move approval. Second. Yeah. All right. To appoint Ms. Amick. Tracy Amick. Tracy Amick to the MPC. MPC. Metropolitan Planning Commission. All right. Is there a question? Please cast your votes. All right. Now we ready, okay. Request approval of the following budget amendments and transfers in the general fund transferred $216,000 from contingency to emergency service operational budget. Is there a motion? So moved, Mr. Chairman. That's a property motion is second. The request be approved. Are you ready for the question? Please cast your votes. All right. Transmittal. Of the fiscal 2023-2024 recommended budget and county manager's message. I so move. Is there a motion? All right. Motion. Second. A second. Okay. We need to vote. Chairman. Um, All right. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Just a minute. Hold on. Just a minute. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's a lot skinny. Want to make sure we transmitting it. <laughs> Let me get it in their hands. All right, now comments, Mr. Uh, Manager. All right, yeah, Mr. Chairman and board, this is your official transmittal of the FY24 budget. Uh, I want to remind you of the uh, upcoming meeting dates, and as I indicated in our pre-meeting, they're extremely important, and I want to make sure that everyone has it on their calendar. Our first budget workshop uh, will be on May 31st at 2.30 uh, here in the chambers. Uh, got several departments that will be coming before you to discuss their budget. 
Uh, on the 9th of June, we'll have our uh, first uh, hearing on the proposed budget, and that's where the external agencies, uh, if there are any who want to come before you uh, to make any comments, they will uh, attend that meeting and we'll get you a schedule uh, of the uh, departments and agencies that will be coming on the June 9th. Uh, our next meeting will be on June 15th, and that's the first public hearing on the millage. Uh, and as state law requires, uh, we have two meetings on that, on that particular day. We'll have the first uh, public hearing at 9.30, and then we'll meet again at uh, uh, 6 p.m. for the second hearing on the millage levy. Also on that day at 10 a.m., we're going to have our second budget workshop. Uh, we're scheduled for, uh, to have our third public hearing on the millage and budget adoption on June 23rd. And we may also have a, a couple meetings in between there. So please, please, if you, uh, when you get those notices, to, we want to make sure we get full attendance from our board to discuss uh, any item that you, uh, that you have questions on, on your budget. Uh, so um, Mr. Chairman, that is your budget. I've met with several um, of board members who have had questions so far, and please, if you have any questions after review this, this document, uh, don't hesitate to call, and we'll set up meetings with staff to explain anything that, that uh, any questions that you may have. All right, do we have any questions from any commissioner at this time? <clears throat> All right, hearing none, please cast your votes for the transmitter. All right, and again, I publish all uh, the um, dates and times for the budget meetings, okay, and the budget hearings, um, and, and so we'll go forth with that. All right, at this time, we're going to have our report from Chief, our bi-monthly report from the Chief. <clears throat> Good morning. Robert, yeah. <laughs> did it come up? Okay. There it is. There it is. It's got fat fingers or something. I don't know. All righty. Good morning and uh, happy Memorial Day to everybody. Hope everyone has a great weekend. Uh, Ms. Rivers, welcome. Uh, Commissioner Rivers, if there's uh, anything that I can answer for you or you need to talk to me, please ask Mr. Kegler to uh, um, get a hold of you, and I'll be happy to do that for you. So welcome. Glad, glad you're here. All right, just going over uh, some crime statistics. Um, shots fired in uh, 25 is incidents, uh, victims wounded in, in five of those. As you can see, um, aggravated assault with... Uh, just not doing good. Excuse me. Um, are up this year and talking to our crime analysts, many of those incidents are brandishing a weapon. That doesn't necessarily mean uh, shots were fired and or anyone was hit. Uh, but if someone displays a weapon, uh, that is an aggravated assault um, uh, with a weapon charged. Um, we have increase in violent crime due to primarily uh, non-domestic assaults. Um, we do have a decrease in shoplifting, which is uh, nice to see. As you know, we've kind of gone over uh, shoplifting several times in my presentations where they uh, really accounted for all of our increase uh, in crime overall. Um, 30 thefts of checks from mail, that is a, a, an issue that we've been trying to deal with uh, across the county where uh, people are actually stealing mail out of postal boxes. Um, so... Uh, these keys somehow get transferred around, which are um, problematic for us. And then the, the checks are taken, uh, they're changed in some manner, and then they're deposited in, in accounts, uh, and then the money is quickly deposited somewhere else or transferred to somewhere else. Uh, we've worked or are working with the U.S. Postal Service to try to uh, address that issue that has been uh, something that we've been encountering um, over the last year for sure. Um, overall, we have a 2.6% decrease from 2022, so that's a, a small decrease, but a decrease nonetheless. 
this shows the over our uh, part one crimes um, in 2023 by, by the beats uh, respectively across the county. Just wanted to, uh, some notable arrests. Uh, 2023 collection of DNA from a Florida suspect matched that of a 2019 rape that occurred at Colonial Grand Apartments over on the islands. Uh, this had been somewhat of a, I guess, a cold case, uh, but uh, following up on uh, uh, the DNA and, and run it through the uh, national database, we were able to uh, make a match and, and go down uh, to Jacksonville and make this arrest. So uh, what's most pleasing about that, and that sounds, you know, kind of interesting to say that, but, you know, that victim obviously uh, needed closure uh, in some manner. It's not complete closure as we know that, but uh, at least uh, our victim knows that we uh, put someone behind bars and we continue to investigate the case and, and bring some level of, of closure to her, and I'm, I'm very thankful for that. Um, we also had a, a landlord of several trailer lots in Azalea Mobile Homes, um, lured uh, young females, almost all juvenile, to his apartment um, and used the threat of eviction um, as a way to um, molest them and, and sexually assault them. So we were able to make a, an arrest on uh, Terry Bowman and, and put him to jail so there's no more uh, young victims over there, or at least uh, uh, vulnerable in that uh, mobile home park. Uh, moving on, these are our citizen contacts from March 27th to May 21st. Uh, had about 1,000 uh, that we documented. I'm sure there were many more, but the, uh, the orange dots reflect uh, all those contacts uh, all across the county. And again, that's spontaneous dialogue with residents and business owners, uh, kind of our bread and butter, getting out of your car, talking to folks, uh, you know, engaging folks in a non-traditional way, non-enforcement way. Uh, no one called for a cop and, and we didn't pull them over for something. It's just getting out of your car and being friendly and, and trying to make a connection on, the, on, on a real level. So um, this reflects that uh, work across the, the county by our young men and women out there. Moving on, uh, we will be uh, starting the K-9 unit this year. We're very excited about that. Our officers are excited about that. Uh, we were uh, go down, to, went down to Florida, uh, picked out two uh, 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 canines. These are uh, uh, photos of them. The two Belgian Malinois are being trained. We got two patrol vehicles that are being outfitted. Outfitted Calvin uh, Turner has worked uh, really hard getting us these vehicles. So I want to thank him and his crew. Um, we've also um, selected the handlers, and they'll begin their training in September after these um, uh, dogs have been trained um, down there in Florida. So very excited about that. Um, we'll be able to use them for community engagement, uh, schools, things of that nature, um, and also uh, out there doing, doing work as they, as they may be needed. What are their names? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Do you want to name it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, actually. Maybe that's, that's a, a contest we ought to set up among the maybe, commissioners. Maybe, maybe. What to name the two new officers. That's right. Well, <laughs> they're, they're, they're beautiful dogs. Thank you. I don't think we're going to name, name uh, one of the dogs Helen, Commissioner Lockett. I'm sorry. I, I'm not that stupid. I'm dumb, but I ain't that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Moving on. Um, our new positions, uh, not necessarily added to the budget, but uh, we are uh, creating these specialty positions within um, Chatham County Police Department, one behavioral health unit officer, one homeless outreach officer, and two traffic enforcement officers, uh, and the neighborhood liaison, neighborhood liaison officers already existed. Um, we have interest in, in all of these positions. We'll be filling them uh, very quickly. That'll allow us to be more proactive than we've been able to in the past due to limited staffing. But... You know, we kind of sat back and, and talked. If we continue to wait, we're not going to get there, and we're just going to have to to get to where we need to get to. And and in support of uh, Mr. Kegler's uh, uh, focus on homeless outreach, uh, we're going to get that position filled, and we'll be able to have a lot more capacity um, in that regard and work with the city of Savannah. And and because obviously we know we we share a lot of the same issues and certainly a lot of the same same folks. So uh, looking forward to that. And when we get those positions populated. I'd like to come back and, and show you who those officers are and, and, and just uh, kind of highlight them for taking an interest in that work. So uh, to be continued. Moving on, uh, we started an initiative. So PERF is the Police Executive Research Forum. Um, they are a, a think tank. They've been around for 40 or 50 years. Uh, they're very uh, uh, well respected in the industry, so to speak. They received a grant from the Department of Justice to fund internships through historically black colleges. Um, and they put out that opportunity to 
members of PERF, Perf which I am a member. And so we, took, we uh, took advantage of that opportunity instantaneously. Sergeant Tony Sladen right here, um, he kind of spearheaded the effort. Um, he he uh, got the application filled out. We got all the, you know, dotted all the I's and crossed all the T's. Uh, so we already have a student from Savannah State uh, has already joined CCPD as a participant in this program. And I think we have two more, I believe. Yes, so we'll have uh, <laughs> quite a few uh, interns that uh, will uh, cycle through uh, Chatham County Police Department as different divisions. In fact, we're, we're considering reaching out to maybe some of the other agencies so they can get exposure to them as well, you know, make it a great partnership. This is an absolutely fantastic pro program. We're, we're uh, excited that we were selected to um, be a part of it, and um, perhaps we can bring the interns here as well to, to highlight them as well. So. Uh, we're thankful for their interest in law enforcement, and we're uh, thankful to the Police Executive Research Forum for, for, for providing us this opportunity. And thank you, Sergeant Sladen, for spearheading this effort. Really appreciate it. Uh, we did have some officers uh, honored by the Exchange Club uh, a few months ago. Officer of the Year was Corporal Sean Bailey. Uh, Detective of the Year, Corporal Chelsea Drain, and Supervisor of the Year, Sergeant Christina Windsor. Just wanted to acknowledge them for their efforts uh, and all their hard work and dedication to the Chatham County Police Department and the citizens. Uh, they do a tremendous job. Uh, they have a lot of promise. Uh, they're going to be our future leaders uh, when we're all long gone. Uh, National Police Week, first of all, thanks to the Commission for our proclamation and all the folks that uh, recognized us, uh, the Clerker Commission, Janice brought a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> snacks and whatnot. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Um, we had a nice time at the Police Memorial. Thank you, um, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Kegler, uh, Ms. Kramer for showing up. If I missed someone else that was there, I apologize, but uh, thank you for showing up. That means a lot. Uh, Phi Beta Sigma, we have a partnership with them. They came out and cooked out for the officers, uh, made hot dogs and hamburgers, and uh, they're a great group of young men, uh, and I always enjoy working with them. So, uh, and Reeves Construction uh, pr dropped off some uh, some cakes, and E911 Center, Miss Diane bought pizza for us one day. So, uh, lots of thanks uh, and lots of uh, appreciation for for supporting law enforcement during our our National Police Week. It's just some more uh, Phi Beta Sigma uh, pictures. Then, uh, in addition, so there's a couple topics I wanted to um, cover before I get to questions that I didn't have on the presentation. Uh, Ms. Stone, we did do a lot of work over there on Kingsway, quite a bit of work that I too much to really highlight in a PowerPoint. Uh, we also had a community meeting uh, with some of the residents over there with, with some of their issues. So uh, I, I think it's damped down quite a bit. There's still some more work to do, but we've been over there working diligently. Uh, on King's Way to try to handle some of their neighborhood issues. Thank you, because the situation sounded pretty bad. It, it was. Uh, it was. You had, you know, any one house can kind of, you know, wreak havoc in the neighborhood. And there's a lot of dynamics uh, over there that I won't go into here publicly. Mm -hmm. But um, we made a lot of headway, uh, and we worked also with the landlord um, in terms of trying to maybe perhaps uh, get some of those folks out of the neighborhood and bring some peace back there. So. Uh, but we'll continue to work on it, and I'll keep you apprised um, as we go along. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Adams, you shared a, a number with me. Someone had some concerns around traffic enforcement and some tags. I've, I've reached out to that person. I haven't been able to get any response back, but I just wanted to let you know I did reach back out to them. I don't need to expect your call. Okay. Um, we also met with Harley-Davidson uh, ownership out there. Um, you know, one of the dynamics out there is Harley-Davidson is in unincorporated. The property where the homeless folks is the city of Savannah. But with that said, we helped coordinate uh, with Captain Hill over at Savannah PD to put him uh, in contact with the ownership over there so they can problem solve. Actually, the very next night, we ended up making an arrest on their property, um, on Harley-Davidson property, for some issues that were going on. So we'll continue to pay attention to it. But me, myself and Captain Fandridge went out and met with them personally. Um, we'll continue to do so until we can, you know, uh, have a little more impact out there with them what we've had so they 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 were very grateful for the meeting okay great excellent uh and then uh lastly uh obviously there has there's been a or not obviously there has been a flyer that's been um floating around relative to an, another iteration of orange crush um on the fourth of july and so that's generated a lot of interest i'm sure some of y'all gotten uh, some calls i know commissioner farrell has 
Uh, we've worked, uh, you know, we're in constant contact with Tybee PD. You know, we're always there to help and assist uh, at their request. You know, we're not going to go onto the island and, and do anything without their, you know, kind of their blessing, so to speak. But what we uh, will do and will continue to do is monitor Highway 80 and all the arteries that feed into that on Wilmington Island. Um, we did that for Peach Fest, had a um, real nice, quiet uh, weekend on the islands relative to that. Uh, this coming up weekend for uh, Memorial Day weekend, we'll have six additional officers out on overtime. Uh, on Highway 80 uh, at specific points to deal with any traffic flow accidents and, and maintain a significant presence to handle any issues that may come our way. We will replicate that approach for 4th of July as well. Uh, if we need to add additional resources to that based on more intelligence that we get uh, around uh, any events, then we'll continue to do so. Um, but we're attentive, uh, we're paying attention, and we'll be out there to address whatever we need to address. With that said, I'll be happy to answer any questions. All right, let me go Commissioner Farrell first, and then our Commissioner Whiteley. Any other? Aye. Commissioner Lockett. Uh, any others? All right, Commissioner Farrell. Yes. Um, Tybee, as everyone knows, is in District 4. And to get to Tybee, you have to go through District 4 on Highway 80 and through some other islands in District 4. So it was quite a... a unsettling event that happened recently and people are on edge. I appreciate the, uh, the response to Peach Fest and the results were uh, very good. There's very little, if any, issues um, to the citizens. Um, some of the complaints from, uh, from the previous with, with the speeding and driving down the side of the road and burnouts and just really bad driving behavior I think kind of sparked a lot of the problems so I would like to be sure that anything uh, that's in the unincorporated area uh, that's going on with bad actors is addressed uh, Like if we address them all right from the start, I, I don't think they'll snowball out of control like what happened recently. So um, I appreciate your prep preparation. Uh, hopefully this uh, event will not draw uh, people that misbehave and that can follow the laws and come down and have fun and enjoy the big crowds and in the, in the beach. So just uh, appreciate what you do and want to make sure you Staying right on top of it. Yes, sir. Yeah. Commissioner Whiteley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief, I just want to first and foremost applaud you um, and your staff, all of our first responders, really, um, for the efforts and outreach that you have. I mean, we see our stats, you know, in a lot of areas are going down, which is very promising. But to see the effort that you're making to engage the community and build trust uh, between the community and the police department, it means a lot to me. And I, I really appreciate that. And I think our community is better because of that. Uh, having that type of relationship is, is pivotal. Um, where the community feels they can trust the police department. So those spontaneous uh, engagements and stuff like that, I love to see that slide because it's showing that we're making an effort to not just be enforcement, but be neighbors as we all are. Uh, so I really appreciate that. I also want to applaud uh, you and Mr. Manager on your efforts as it relates to um, the Behavior Health Unit and actually putting that together as we look into the different challenges of mental health. And uh, as Commissioner Stone uh, has mentioned uh, uh, our big focus on that, uh, not only locally but nationally, uh, to see that we're taking other steps to try to mitigate other challenges so that we can make sure that people are getting the help that they need um, is it, huge. And so I want to applaud you and uh, um, the manager for that, as well as um, strategic planning as it relates yep. to the engagement with the homeless, you know, yep. Ms. Uh, Tara. Tara. Um, the Savannah State engagement made my heart smile, man. I'm, I'm happy to see that. I mean, as a Savannah State alum, uh, to see that we're really um, doing what we can to bring Savannah State students into the fold. It's a brilliant university that's um, brought a lot of us here. Um, you know, I, I really appreciate that. Um, 
as it relates to the orange crush piece, I just I just want to make a, a statement. This isn't to you. This is just a statement. I hope that uh, we are focusing on um, crime enforcement and not saying that um, because a, a big crowd who may be darker than some of us, that it's going to be problems because that's not necessarily the case. Let's focus on the main thing and keep the main thing the main thing. Um, so if it's crime taking place, and by all means, let's let's take care of the crime. But, you know, I, I mean, we could sit here and list out all kind of reasons why we could be scared for different groups, large groups that uh, come to our town. We are a tourist city, a tourist town. So we're going to have to be prepared for that. Um, and I, I know uh, I don't live on Tybee. I don't live in District 4, so I, I can't uh, speak to any specific uh, fears because I don't, I don't deal with that. But I live right off of 204, and I can tell you about motor, motorcycle fears. I can, I can sit here and list all kind of groups, you know, if I wanted to. But I think, the, I think it's important that we as a community make sure we keep the main thing the main thing. If we're going to fight crime, we want to make sure our laws are, and ordinances are abided by, let's stick to that. But, you know, if, if somebody throws an event and the uh, assumption is that maybe one demographic group is going to be there more than another, that doesn't mean we need to all get up in arms because then we'll all get up in arms for a whole lot of stuff like March, um, but I digress. Thank you so much for your efforts. Thank you, Commissioner, appreciate it. Let me go to Commissioner Lockett. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Chief, you mentioned earlier, uh, for lack of a better word, I'm gonna say for uh, male crime. Um, are we making much headway on that and what can the public do to prevent that as much as possible? Well, with uh, my suggestion, and it doesn't, obviously there's a certain uh, part of the, the public that uh, doesn't do their billing online and whatnot, but to the extent that you can pay your bills online and not drop a check uh, either in your own mailbox, and, and it's sad to say that, but I'm just being real, um, uh, that would be my suggestion on the front end. It's, 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 a, it's a difficult crime to investigate um, in that uh, the money gets transferred so quickly to so, in so many hands um, and it takes so long to, um, um, to, to investigate them. And uh, it also comes down to resources. I mean, there's, there could be 15 of these events in one weekend. That's 15 additional cases. We only have two United States Postal Inspectors assigned to the cities, uh, to Savannah area. So they are busy and this isn't the only thing that they do. Um, so. Um, I, I would really like to, you know, if you can pay your bills online and not drop hard checks uh, in your mailbox, uh, that would be uh, the best that we can do on the front end. Okay. Thank you. And there seems to be particular banks that have very little controls on um, how people deposit, because now you can deposit checks from your phone. Uh, and if their business practices don't have some, some, some barriers in place, you know, you go take a check, you change it to your name or someone else's name, and you change the amount, and they, they will deposit that money instantaneously once you put it in the account. Uh, that money's gone. Now, the consumer, meaning let's say if it was you, you're going to be protected by the bank, um, by FDIC, and then some of those other things. But it's still a huge concern and a huge problem, and we're trying to get, uh, get at it to, to, to make an impact. Thank you. And, and, and we'll say on, on the same line, <clears throat> those who can put a lock on your mailbox. You know, put put a put a put a lock on there so you can get there. Okay. Now let us go to Commissioner Kicklighter. Thank you, Chairman. Chief, I want to thank you and uh, and acknowledge part of the predicament that you're put into with trying to <clears throat> please certain situations because I believe I saw that there's federal laws that that actually in place now that from a court case or something where if Tabby Allen hires X amount for one event, they got to hire X amount of officers for another event, blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> and um, that right there alone is rough. I also, there's times as a white person that I hope to hear black people speak up because I need to hear it for race relations reasons. And here's one where I'll try to step up on something. I watched the kind of disaster called Orange Crush, but I'm not going to post crap about it. I ain't saying nothing. 
because I don't want it to be misconstrued that I think it's something to do with, oh, these black kids. It would be the same thing, in my opinion, if it was 100,000 white kids from any university. You mean St. Patrick's Day? <laughs> it's a hell of a thing, exactly. Now, that's what I'm saying. Trash everywhere, everything done. But on that event, it's organized. There are police officers hired. And um, the structure's in place. With this, because there's no organization to it, there's not even the police officers that can help maintain it. But my point being on that is I just, and I get it. I mean, I hear what people say, but I just, I just hope we can get to a point where we quit, I mean, we quit seeing so much in, in, in black and white and just know that I would, it's my hope that the same people raising heck about Orange Crush would raise heck if the same thing with 18 to 21 year old white folks were doing the same thing. And, and I believe, I really do believe in my heart of hearts that the majority would be raising cane because Nobody likes getting, I don't go down on 4th of July because I don't want to get stuck in the traffic, you know? And, and so people ticked off backing up in traffic and all that. They, you know, they don't care what color the people were that's backing them up. I mean, it's, we just at a, I think we're at a pivotal point in time in society and, and God knows we just need to quit. We need to quit seeing it. We need to quit seeing the black and white thing and just see the people thing, and, and that's, that's it. Crime is a crime. All right, let's go to Commissioner uh, Stone. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chief, as always, you do an outstanding job, but um, I'm really pleased with this behavioral health unit because if we can diffuse people that are in crisis from having to be sent to the detention center and sent where they can get help, um, by professionals that can recognize that we save not only an individual who's in crisis, um, them from getting um, overstimulated, but also we save money by not having to process them at the local detention center. I'm also very excited about this homeless outreach unit um, because, as we know, homelessness is spreading everywhere, and these individuals often just need some guidance. Some of them uh, don't. They, they won't accept help, and I understand that, but there have got to be controls put on that because people that own private property do have private property rights. Mm -hmm. And so I'm, I'm really impressed with what you've extended yourself to do with both of these units. And um, I'll look forward to hearing a progress report on how it all goes. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. All right, Commissioner um, Adams. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Chief, for all you do. Thank you, sir. From day one on my position on the commission, you've been open, frank, and accessible. So I thank you. But I also want to apologize for bothering you on a Sunday. Oh, that's all right. That's <laughs> <laughs> all right. And, but I told the young man that you were going to call him, so I, I don't know why he didn't answer. Okay. But Because he was giving it to me all day. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay. So I'll thank try him you again. again. I'll try him again. Yes, sir. And don't worry about Sunday. No, it's all right. <laughs> all right. Commissioner Milton. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, too, want to thank you very much for your, your help, your assistance, and I don't call you on Sunday, but I will text you. <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> the the dirt on on um on what's that Little Neck Road? That's right. The dirt yeah. on Little Neck Road was a six o'clock in the morning call. The um the uh, Holly Davis guy, he he just he he has been missing packages and yep. All of, They're so very frustrated. It, I understand why they are for sure. And I really appreciate you showing up because I, I can't resolve it all. <laughs> Thank well, that's, you that's so much. That's the least we can do. We may not be able to solve the problem absolutely, but the least we can do is go and listen to folk because that's what, that's what they deserve. So. And let me ask, I'm going to ask about uh, the planning we're doing for um, all of it now. Uh, we, we're getting ready to put our traffic officers out and about. Uh, 
is are they going to be motorcycle units or they could be car units or the motorcycle units is down the road yeah that may be down the road okay. um the uh not i wouldn't say ironically y'all would know this because a lot of the complaints come from from you is like traffic is one of our biggest complaints so right. um again if we sat around and waited till we were able to get um you know enough officers to to fully complement that unit we just weren't going to get there anytime soon um, this commission funded those positions. They've been vacant, um, as you know, and we needed to get um, some attention paid to the issues out in the neighborhoods and on Highway 80 and out, 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 out west because we're growing, there's traffic, there's congestion, and we needed to have a focus on that. So no motors as of this point, um, but they will be out there in, in uh, vehicles. I just asked that question because I was surprised that I went to a function where uh, the state patrol was. I didn't know the state patrol had a motorcycle mm -hmm. unit. Yes, they did. But 40 of them showed up. And I, and I was surprised not to know that they had one. And then all of a sudden, there are 40 mm -hmm. of them. And I, said, oh, and I said, man, yeah, we've been doing this for a long time. Yeah. You know, and so to sit and talk with them uh, and to see and to know that that unit. So we got something to look forward to when we have that kind of traffic unit as well because we know uh, in certain cases, um, I watched a, a officer, a traffic officer in a car trying to get through I-16 to an accident. And the, if he had a motorcycle, he'd have did better. Because, you know, it's, it's difficult, and especially when, especially when people turn sideways. I, I, I know the law says you're supposed to pull to the right, but I don't know why people would turn sideways. You know, and that blocked her, and he had to manipulate the car to get out mm -hmm. the way so he can get by, all right? But we look forward to the, the development of those units that, that you're coming up with, and we thank you for you and your staff for the job you do. Ms. Kramer, you wanted to say something? Yeah, actually, I had a couple of things to talk about. Okay. I just came back from GFOA conference, and check fraud is back in a big way. Big way. Um, so their advice is do not put a check in the box where it's going to sit overnight because people are breaking into the mailboxes. Mm -hmm. So take it into the post office, put it in the post office. Um, don't leave it in your mailbox. Um, you know, just be careful with it because checks are very easy to duplicate. And we're seeing a lot of big theft on that. And apparently the people uh, making these, the bad actors on this are all, you know, out of the country. So it's really difficult to catch a lot of these people. Um, also, um, Michael asked Dennis Jones with SEMA to come up with a special events contingency plan for these large traffic events, which includes things like the festival zones that you were talking about. Uh, I think they've met three times. They've met like three times. It's um, Savannah Police, Chatham County, Georgia State Patrol, uh, Board of Ed, so j the Sheriff's Department. So just anything we could, um, that would be used as a plan for any event where we're going to see a large volume of people in that incorporated county. So we'll let you know more about that when it's finished. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else now for the Chief? All right. Thank you, sir. Right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, there was there was no one who needed to discuss anything on the action and calendar individually. Uh, yeah. I would like to pull number four, just the information. Item four, I'd like to pull. You you want to pull it to for another day, or you want to pull it to have a discussion? Wait, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Durst who is the person that company originally gave this 180 acres to the Canal Society, mm -hmm. uh, brought us right after, before the meeting you and I had mm -hmm. information indicating that in regard to the reverter issue, Durst got bought out eventually by our Flowers Industry. Okay. And that reverter may be owned not by Flowers, but Durst. And has asked that we table it for two weeks in order All right. to table have number four. a meeting so that yeah, that's, don't okay. do something. That's, All right, that's, that's what I'm good. trying to get to. Okay, yeah. good. Let's All right, let, let, let's I do this then. pull it and table right. it. Okay. But I have to pull it first. All right, let, 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 let's do this. Let's do this. Um, let me have a motion to accept the action calendar except number four. So moved. Second. Second. 
Properly motion and second that we uh, accept the action calendar, except number four. Are you ready for the question? Please signify by voting. All right, now, as it retains to number four, uh, make, let me have I make, a, I make a motion that we table number four for two weeks to our next second. regular scheduled meeting. All right, so properly motion and second that we table number four. Are you ready for the question? Please signify your vote. All right. Number four goes to, all right. And in, in that in that time, will we'll we get those get the commissioners those documents and stuff we need? All right. Okay. All right. We didn't have any first readers or second readers. That now takes us to the information item, Mr. Manager. Uh, yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. At your place, you uh, you got a, a report with some updates and some additional information, uh, uh, some information from the. Uh, from SEMA about the hurricane, upcoming Hurricane Expo, uh, some information from the library on the Summer Reading Challenge, uh, information on the uh, uh, Animal Services Adoption Event, and also some uh, updates from the Fox Recreation. So therefore, that's your place for your information. I'm also going to uh, ask Ms. Ms. Diane Pinckney, our E91 director, we've had a, a number of uh, calls uh, and issues that have come up uh, from the public on 911, and I want to get Ms. Pinkney to come up and kind of give you uh, a brief overview of what's happening there. Uh, we would caution the public that please, if you uh, be mindful of when you call 911. 911 is for emergency situations. We've got a lot of folks who call just for routine stuff. I understand when you can't find the information that you need, the easiest thing is to do is to dial 911, and that's what that's not what 911 is for. So I'm going to ask Ms. Pinkney to come to the podium and and give you a brief update and let you know what's what's happening there, and we can address some of those issues that uh, that we've got coming. Ms. Pinkney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good morning. Chairman Ellis, uh, Board of Commissioners, Mr. Manager, and each of you in your prospective places, um, I thank you all for allowing me this space to come up and just give you a brief overview of what's transpiring in the 911 Center currently. Um, as I've said before, when I've addressed you, that the 911 Center is a very busy, uh, high-stressed, um, environment. We process or handle approximately 1,500 calls daily, and that consists of police, EMS, fire, animal control, and other types of, of public calls for service. And also, each call may garner uh, multiple responses. For, in, for in, instance, it may, uh, you may have one call that needs fire, police, and EMS. Um, so those calls, even though it's 1,500 calls, by the time uh, we get through processing that call, it has crossed many hands and um, has garnered many different types of responses. Um, we are yet building up our numbers for, um, the, for our staffing. Um, as we recover from the pandemic, we lost quite a few folks during that time frame. And at the same time, we are in training to implement a new, more robust, computer-aided dispatch system and emergency medical dispatch system. And for those of you that don't know what that is, um, a computer-aided dispatch system is a, an electronic version of what we used to uh, actually record uh, the types of calls that we receive, the location, uh, the type of call, and who is responding. We used to write those on a dispatch card, but now we use a computer for that purpose, um, and we actually put the location in the system, and our dispatchers can actually um, transmit the call while they're still call talking to the caller. Um, so it's a much more efficient system that we're using. Um, we're implementing a new system, and it's gonna require that our personnel be trained. Um, <clears throat> In order for us to train, we still have to, uh, while we're training, um, operate the center. It is a 24-hour operation. 
And we're short right now, so in order for us to do that, we had to kind of think out of the box, outside the box. So we're doing night and day classes to minimize the number of people that we're taking out of the center at one time. Um, so over the past few months, we have been uh, separating our staff, putting some staff in the 911 center to work, and other staff has been uh, in classroom. And that, that training consists of testing, uh, it's scenarios, so it's very, very intense, robust training. Um, so it's, and we're being trained in each discipline. So that accounts for the reason for the long answer times, because we're kind of operating bare bones while we're preparing our staff for this new system. And the emergency medical dispatch system um, actually is a system by which we, we uh, our, our staff gives pre-arrival instructions such as how to perform CPR, how to deliver a baby, how to stop the bleed. These are the, the types of things that we're having to train our staff on. And in order to implement this new system, we also have to train our people on CPR. So it's a lot of training going on right now. And in order for us to be able to implement this new system, um, we're gonna have to make sure that everybody is adept at using it. Because if they're not, if they don't understand the coding and, and exactly how the systems operate, that could actually delay a response. Some of the actions that we're taking to improve the system is that we're, we're um, trying to expand our part-time employee pool, um, people that have worked for us in the past who may not want to work in a full-time capacity, um, may want to work in a part-time capacity. So we reach out periodically to people that have worked for us um, and, and ask that they come back in. So we have been somewhat successful um, in that endeavor. But we're also um, reaching out a little bit more. We've been communicating with, the, with Mr. Manager and uh, Chief Hadley, who has uh, availed some of his staff to work with us on a temporary basis until we can get our, in, our numbers, our staffing numbers up. So he um, has agreed to do that, and we're going to be meeting on Monday to discuss the people that we have targeted for that purpose and uh, we're gonna begin the training process for them so that they can learn how to use the computer system. In my day, we, we used to be able to sit somebody next to us and we show them how to fill out the card and we you know, get, uh, give the officer or the EMS unit or whatever the information over the radio and stamp the card and that was it. But now, you got to know how to type. You got to know how to how the system works. So we're going to be working with Chief Hadley's staff and uh, our newer staff that we we just recently hired to train them on the use of the system. And they're going to be answering our non-emergency calls while the experienced 911 operators answer the 911 calls. Also, we're working with Human Resources to improve our salaries, and this will also uh, improve our retention rate and the quality of candidates that we attract. And I don't know that whether you all know it or not, but communications officers have to have the same, meet the same requirements in some regards as police officers. For example, they can't have any felonies, they can't um, have a pattern of misdemeanors or protective orders or things of that nature, um, they have to have a good driving record. So a lot of the same requirements that come into play for police officers, always, also uh, we have to meet those standards. So even when people apply for a position in communications, um, that kind of whittles away some of the people that apply. Um, we have to kind of rule them out if, if they don't meet all of those qualifications. And the other thing is not everybody can do this job. Um, when we're hiring, uh, the person may interview well, they may uh, test well, they may do um, meet all those qualifications, but when they get in the communication center, they can't handle the stress level, or they become overwhelmed, they can't multitask. So there are a lot of factors that come into uh, actually 
getting a well-rounded communications officer that can perform in every aspect of the job. But we feel that if we improve the salaries, that will help us to retain those people who are good candidates that won't go out and you know find another job with less stressors um, that where they'll make comparable money or more money. We're also working with Fort Stewart 911 to establish a backup system. And for me, that is the biggest thing because when we uh, merged the two centers back in 2000, 2004, um, we really didn't take into consideration that we served as each other's backup. Uh, and now we've become a larger agency, the largest agency in this particular area, and nobody could really take us on to act as our, our backup in the event we, hand, we had an influx of calls that we were handling. So uh, this is big for us if Fort Stewart is allowed to do that because uh, they will be piggybacking off of our CAD system. So when they, if we have an influx of calls, say for instance, we have a, uh, a traffic accident that everybody can see and everybody's calling 911, overwhelming the center, um, that call, those, those overflow calls will go to Fort Stewart and Fort Stewart can take the calls and actually put them into the CAD system, bypassing the call taking system. So you won't have two, two call takers uh, handling the same call and that caller having to repeat what they've already repeated to Fort Stewart. So basically Fort Stewart will take the call, put, put it in the system, and it'll be farmed to our 911 center where, and go directly to the dispatcher for dispatch and call and handling so that the correct responders, are, co responders could be sent immediately. Yes, they'll be using our system. And yes, there's, there's his reach end of life. So um, it would be so beneficial to all of us, especially since we're in the same region, um, that we be on the same system. And, and just, just a, a note to that, as we met with them, we reminded them that 70% of the soldiers stationed at Hunter, all right, live out in the county, all right? So that's why... Mm -hmm. We, we're entering and, and there are going to be more parts to the partnership between the county and Fort Stewart as we roll them out. And, and, but this is one that's a, it, it's honestly a big one that helps us now. It really does. And it, it can also be a benefit to Fort Stewart because mm -hmm. uh, we get, you know, people when they call in on their cell phones, they might get us and need to go to Fort Stewart or get, right. you know, Fort Stewart gets the call and it needs to come to us. It, well, in this, when this system rolls out, we can each just type the call in and they'll get it, you know, real time. Right. And uh, so that, that would benefit not only us, but the public because you won't have that level of frustration. And also that will free up that uh, dispatcher or that call taker to handle other calls. Until we get these systems in place, we're asking that the public, um, just as Mr. Kegler said, only use the 911 system for emergency purposes. Um, we, we have City of Savannah 311 in my Chatham. So uh, we need to make sure that the public knows that uh, they need to learn what these systems are about, what, you know, what resources are available through them so that they won't tie up the 911 system uh, for information related calls. And also, it's important to stay on the phone until you get an answer. Don't hang up. Uh, we have, uh, whenever somebody is doing a uh, EMS call, for instance, and it requires that the dispatcher or call taker stay on the phone and render aid. For instance, that person may be in advanced labor. So the call taker is gonna actually use a script to talk that person on the phone through delivering that child. So that can take a while. You have to stay on the phone until the EMS unit arrives, arrives on scene. So that call taker is out of the box until the uh, responders arrive. So just keep that in mind and stay on the phone. Um, and also, it's important to continue to report any issues you may have because your issue may not be because of call answering 
or because it's busy in the center. It may be an actual issue that we need to address. And the only way that we know whether something is happening is if you let us know. Um, so we, uh, when, when there is a situation or problem that you have, make contact with us. Um, my admin's phone number is 912-652-6589. That's the number to my office. And we talk to people all the time. We'll address your issue. And I've even had the recordings put on my desk so I can check them directly if I need to. So um, that is basically what, we, what I have, the update that I have. And I also mentioned earlier, we have completed the training. We talked about training earlier. We have completed the training for our current staff. And now um, we're scheduling training for our recently hired staff on the new system. So we should see our, a better response time by our call takers um, in the days ahead. So that's all I have if you all have any questions of me. All right, any questions for commissioners? All right, Commissioner White. <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Ms. Pinckney. I know you guys uh, have, a, as you mentioned, uh, a very stressful uh, role, and we appreciate you guys. Um, my question was as it relates to um, trying to fill these staffing shortages. Um, I understand it, part of our process is a typing requirement, right? Uh, yes. Words per minute. How many people do we lose? Well, not lose, but how many people don't make it past that section, the typing test? We don't get those numbers. That's handled by human resources. Um, but it's a, it is something that we can't get away from because, um, because of the fast-paced environment that we're in. Mm -hmm. Um, they have to know how to type. They can't hunt and peck, mm -hmm. you know, because they're working with more than one system at a time and they have to type and talk. Mm -hmm. um, they can't type and they can't get the information, write it down and then put it in the CAD system. They type and talk. Mm -hmm. So that's how the, the system is designed to work. Um, but we also have a pre-employment exam uh, that is called critical and that basically just gives you some scenarios um, like different types of calls, fire mm -hmm. call, EMS call, police call. Um, and basically, they, we see how you would handle it with no training. Right. So we go by industry best practices when it comes to um, uh, the pass and fail scores, just mm -hmm. to be safe. Right. And um, so it's really worked well for us. Most of the, the situations or problems that we have is a lot of people can't stand the stress and the fast-paced environment that we work in the types of calls. Um, again, during my day, when you get my age, you kind of start, you have the war stories. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, you know, we didn't receive the kinds of calls that we're receiving now. I, I have the supervisor send me a synopsis every morning uh, or at the end of every shift so I can see what types of calls they're handling. Uh, you know, overdose calls, shootings, you know, just things on the, on the regular that we used to handle every once in a while. So um, we actually had to work with HR to make uh, EAP and, uh, you know, stress management training a regular part of our, uh, our scheduling so that people could learn how to manage their stress who do the kind of works that, the work that call takers and dispatchers do. And um, also I think it's important that people know that dispatchers, the way it was years ago, is no longer like that. You used to have a dispatcher and a call taker, uh, a dispatcher handling everything. You know, they took the call, they logged it, they dispatched it, they tracked the responders. Well, the call taker and the dispatcher may be in two different rooms. So again, accuracy when you're using these systems is important. Um, being able to multitask is important. Being able to handle stress and, you know, handling all of these active shooter calls, things of that nature, it's important that you be able to handle that because we don't need you getting on the phone and freezing or freaking out when you get a really, really bad call. Yes, ma'am. So it's, it's important that we we make sure that a person has all the qualifications uh, up front. We don't find that out when we get hired because we were hiring people and hiring people 
And they were nice, interviewed well, but then they were hunting and pecking. Yeah, or couldn't take the heat. Um, so uh, the other thing, the driving record piece, is that a state requirement or is that something that we have here locally? It's a state requirement. Gotcha. Um, if you have like a one traffic ticket or something like that, that won't make a difference because we're not hiring you to drive per se. But if you have a pattern of traffic citations and, and suspensions or revocation, that shows you have a disregard for the law. Yeah. So my last question is, aside from pay, what do you think uh, is the biggest um, determining factor or the, the biggest challenge that uh, we have to bring in on uh, more consistent uh, dispatchers or members into E911? Because I know there's call takers and there's dispatchers. Well, good work ethic is important. And, you know, uh, that one of the biggest challenges we have is we have to be competitive. You know, we have to make sure that uh, in our salaries, we have to make sure that we pay people for what they're doing. Right. I'm, I'm asking. I understand that clearly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm asking, uh, aside from salary, what would be that next uh, thing that, that we as a county could do to, to help? Just what you're doing right now. We, we are very well supported um, as far as EAP, any, anything I contact, uh, our HR department uh, in reference to, um, they're, they're very, very amenable to. I think uh, in us providing a, a good work environment um, for them to work in, the job itself is already stressful, but when you uh, don't have the, a good physical environment for them to work in, um, that, that makes a big difference. We don't, we don't have so much of a problem hiring now that the pandemic is coming, is, is over or just about over. Um, we don't have a problem hiring. It's just when we get them in, mm -hmm. um, we need to make sure that the environment is conducive to them learning the job and doing the job. So yes, well. th that's, that's where we're kind of struggling. So we're coming up with ways. We're improving the environments. We're getting better seating. We're holding people accountable for their actions. Um, so those are things that, that we're working on to make sure that we maintain the staff that we have and we're able to keep staff that we bring on. Gotcha. Well, thank you so much for your efforts. All right. Anything else? Mr. Manager? Yes. Yes, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, I appreciate Ms. Pinckney bringing those, those issues to, to, our, to the forefront, and we've been working with human resources and staff to try to make things better. As you, know, as you can, can guess, the pandemic uh, took a toll on us, uh, and, and these individuals, they couldn't work from home. They're like a lot of our first responders. They had to be there, and that took a toll on us. I will say that some things that the board has uh, kind of helped us implement and things that we've got in the pipeline. Uh, the new uh, 911 facility that'll be uh, co-located with our emergency operations facility, that's gonna be a huge, uh, you know, huge improvement. Uh, in this year's proposed budget, we've got some salary adjustments that will also help out. Uh, but, you know, we're facing this throughout all of our first responders. If I look at police and sheriff and, um, 911, those are the areas that's most critical for us. Those are the areas that, uh, frankly, uh, you know, people, we don't see the influx of people really wanting to work in those areas. So we have to make it a little more attractive for those folks. So, and we're working towards those. Uh, uh, Ms. pinkley has been doing this uh, for a number of years and, and uh, you know, they have hung in there. And so I, I think that we're about to turn the corner on that service. So, you know, I'm optimistic uh, as to what we're doing. So. Uh, stay tuned for, for, for more updates. Mr. Kegler, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, the new facility because we have vastly outgrown where we are right now. Um, but, you know, I really, really would like to say it, that I admire those that stayed during the pandemic because we, we really didn't know what we were going to face, you know, whether we were going to have to shut the whole center down but there were those that came and they availed themselves, worked tons of overtime. And I just really need to uh, publicly say that I really appreciate their support. Um, they're working and we still have some 
uh, even now who work a lot of overtime in support of the center and they are very committed to the job that we do. So I just ask for your support as we attempt to make things better, as we do make things better for the center. And, and I thank you, I thank Human Resources for how they're working with us to come up with strategies, uh, project management also, as they um, work with getting the new systems in place. So it's kind of difficult right now, but we're committed to making sure that we get where we need to be. All right, is that it? All right, there is a need for us to have executive session for acquisition, personnel, and litigation. All right, may I have a motion to adjourn and go to executive session? So Seven. moved, Chair. Second? second. Probably motion to second. All those in favor signify by voting. You got a vote, Ms. You got a vote. <laughs> All right, we are going to executive session. The video? What is the problem? Um,